Hello there and welcome to another computer science video. My name is John Barker and today we're going to be looking at pseudocode and more specifically the 2016 paper component to pseudocode. A lot of students tend to struggle with pseudocode but hopefully I can show you that you can get all 11 marks on these questions. And the key really is all about reading the question. So here we go. Miles Hill Primary School is staging their annual sports day using a recognised convention, design and algorithm to help process the results of a race. There are eight lanes in the race and the finish time for each competitor is recorded in order of lane number. Your algorithm should contain the following inputs. The finish times for each of the eight lanes. Your algorithm should output appropriate labels with the times and corresponding lane numbers of the gold medal winner, which is the fastest time, the silver medal winner, which is the second fastest time, and the bronze medal winner, which is the third fastest time. Your algorithm should be written using self-documenting identifiers, and the total for this question is 11 marks. Now let's look at this a bit more closely. What does it mean by a recognized convention? Well, simply, we mean pseudocode, we can mean flowcharts, or we can mean structured English. A recognized convention is any method of producing an algorithm. The next thing I noticed was the number of lanes that are required and the fact we need to have a race time for each lane. It also states that the algorithm should have appropriate labels. That means when I output anything from my algorithm, we should have some words with it to explain what we are outputting. For example, the lane numbers with the corresponding race times. Then we have our gold, silver and bronze medal winners. And obviously the gold will be the fastest time entered into our system, the silver will be the second fastest time and the bronze the third fastest time. When it asks us to use self-documenting identifiers, that means that any variable in our pseudocode should represent exactly what it's storing. So for example, the total will store the total. So now I've finished my fact-finding method, it's time to start writing some pseudocode. And I always leave space at the top for my variable declaration and my initialization of my variables. And those are very big words, but basically that just means I'm going to create some bits of memory where I can store some of my values. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a for loop. A for loop allows me to loop my algorithm a set number of times and I've been told that I have eight lanes so I'm going to declare a local variable called lane equal to one. Then I write to eight and that allows me to iterate eight times and the word iterate simply means repeat and with any iteration you need to make sure that you increment to the next value otherwise you will never move on to the next step. So in this example I'm going to say next lane. So when we iterate through the code once, lane will be incremented by one. Because the question specifically asked me to use labels, I've used an output here to send a message to the user's screen. And the message that should appear is enter time for lane one in the first iteration. In the second iteration, it should say enter time for lane two, and then three and four and five, six, seven and eight. The user will then enter the time for that lane. I will then use the time to work out if it's a gold time, a silver time, or a bronze time. And in pseudocode, if you're ever trying to compare anything, you would use selection. And selection here is if statements. If the time is less than the gold time, then we need to set that time as the new gold time. However, whatever was in there before needs to be moved down to silver and whatever was in silver needs to be moved down to bronze. And before I do that, I need to initialize and declare my variables. So I'm gonna set the lane as an integer and really I should initialize these to be zero. It's always good practice to do that. I'm gonna set the time as a real because time has a decimal point in it and therefore it can't be a whole number such as an integer. I need to set the goal time as real 
and I'm going to initialize that to be 999.99 and that's a really high number and if you think about that it's really really important and it catches students out so please be aware of what you're setting your variables to if the first goal time comes in and let's say it's 10.8 seconds and we try to say if the time of 10.8 seconds is less than the goal time which would be zero if it wasn't initialized you would never get a faster time than zero not even Usain Bolt himself can run that fast the next step is to set the silver time as real to a very high value so it can be set the first time round then we're going to set the bronze time as a real as well to a very high number so that after the first pass all the gold then the silver then the bronze time after the first three data entries will all be set to the times that we put into our algorithm so as we discussed before if the time is less than the gold time then we need to take the silver time and put that in the bronze time so we've moved that down but one thing the question asked us to represent and to store is the lane numbers themselves because when we need to produce the bronze, silver and gold times later we need to say which lanes they have come from. So that means I'm going to have to declare three more variables so I set the bronze lane as an integer, I'll set the silver lane as an integer and I'll set the gold lane as an integer and that helps me keep track of which lane has the fastest times in them once that's done I need to pass the silver lane into the bronze lane because I've already done the times I need to pass the gold time into the silver time I need to pass the gold lane into the silver lane and then finally I need to set the time that currently is the fastest as the gold time and store whichever lane that might be. Now I'm just going to move my next lane end of my loop because it's getting in the way. I'll put that in later. Then I'll look at the next step of my algorithm. If the time is less than the silver time, then what I need to do is pass silver time into the bronze time. I need to pass the silver lane into the bronze lane because everything shifts down. Then I'll store the current time I have in silver time and then I will put the lane that I'm in into the silver lane so all I've done here is reset the silver lane and push the old silver down into the bronze category and the final part of my algorithm is saying if the time is less than the bronze time then I simply set or overwrite the current time with the bronze time the current lane with the bronze lane so whatever was there before no longer gets a medal and that's the end of my three selection comparisons for this algorithm and you must make sure that you end your if statements and then I've added back in my next lane that's important to increment the lane because otherwise I'd always be stuck on lane number one and we'd never get out of our loop and after we've finished the loop, we now need to output which is the gold medal winner in which lane, the silver medal winner in which lane, and the bronze medal winner and in which lane. And don't forget, the algorithm asks us to output labels with that, so I output a nice message. Now I've run out of space here, so you can imagine that we need four more output statements, two for silver and two for bronze, and I'm sure you can manage that on your own. And in total, that pseudocode should get us 11 marks. Now, always in the mark scheme, if you've had a go at this question already and you've got a slightly different output, do not worry because alternative approaches will still get full credit in the exam if the concept that you have applied is correct. My advice now is to forget everything I've just said get a blank piece of paper, go back to the start of the video and have a go at the algorithm again. Once you've completed that, come back to the end of the video and have a look at my solution. Compare the concepts and see how well you've done because in pseudocode, practice really does make perfect. And all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching and hopefully you'll join me again for another pseudocode question very soon.